soccer. Well, actually, you know Matt from playing soccer with him, both for school and outside of school. Matt's a great guy and certainly deserving of any honors that come his way. And I'm sure there's more to come in his senior year. So you're telling me you weren't a kicker in your time at the high school? If I had known that that's what it took, I certainly would have tried. How long can you reach from? Like 45, 50, right? No, I've strengthened it since high school, but <laughs> I'm still thinking about trying out. That knee injury ending your career in the pros. Hold on to your dreams, people. Hold well, on to your dreams. Let's get back to real football. The score at halftime is 7-6. to six. Norristown leading by one point. Upper Dublin doing a nice job in the first two quarters of this game keeping this game close and having the chance in the third quarter here to attack a little bit and try and, you know, get a lead and even win this ball game. Well, if you make it through a half against the Eagles this close, that's no surprise anymore. Now we have a game, and this is what we've been waiting for, really, Norristown's first close game of all year, and they've been well up on all teams entering the third quarter in their six victories this year. So this is the first close game, and Upper Dublin's doing it with really their main weapon, Monty Jesse carrying the load, 12 carries for 82 yards, including that long touchdown run, brilliant run down the sidelines that had to stun Narstown a little bit. At 7-6, we, uh, you know, we're used to seeing that 28 to nothing halftime score. How do you think Norristown comes out in the second quarter and responds to only scoring one touchdown in the first half? Well, they, they did double Upper Dublin in first downs. Upper Dublin got five first downs to Norristown's 10. So that implies that Norristown was moving the ball a little bit better than the Cardinals. So I think Norristown has to just come out and be patient, do what they've been doing. Uh, they started to get Troy Wittenberg going a little bit. They started to get their passing attack going a little bit. And they really dominated the game. I shouldn't say dominated, but they controlled the play for, for that first half. Um, so I think they're, they're a little bit shocked by that touchdown late in the second quarter. But I think Narstown will just continue to rely on their defense and continue to be patient on offense. What have you liked about Upper Dublin's game plan so far in this game you know, on defense and definitely on offense scoring that touchdown late in the second quarter? Well, on defense, I like their commitment to stopping Troy Swittenberg. It's allowed Audley Stewart to get 59 yards so far in the first half, just under Swittenberg's 61. But I like their commitment to stopping Troy Swittenberg. They said, we're going to bring up eight. We're going to bring the deep safety, if you're not going to throw on us, to make nine and make you go to other people. And Troy Swittenberg just had a brilliant run for his touchdown. But other than that, Upper Dublin has, has kept the focus on Troy Swittenberg. And I think you'll see the same thing in the second half. On offense, um, they really don't have a lot of weapons. It's been Lozano a little bit, well, excuse me, Logano as their main receiver, and mostly Monty Jesse in his 12 carries. So they haven't had the ball a whole lot. They've thrown it five times. Jesse's carried it 12 times, um, but they've held it enough, and Jesse has had enough in the way of ball control to keep Upper Dublin in this game. So really, they're hanging in the game with defense, uh, but a team that's going to do that comes back to bite you on offense, and you have to be careful. So we're ready for third quarter action. The King will kick off Matt Spicko to the two deep men for Upper Dublin. And we are underway in the third quarter. Spicko's kick goes down to about the 15 yard line. Taken up the middle and he gets out to about the 34 yard line. So Upper Dublin will start in pretty good field position. This Norristown defense, if they're giving up their second touchdown of the year, see if they can come back in with even more intensity than we usually see them. You know they've got to be angry. They take offense to any time they give up points. First and 10 from the 33-yard line. Justin Brandenburg, the quarterback, under center once again. Miller is the man in motion. And movement before the play. And it looks like we are going to have a false start. No, an offsides penalty called on Narsdown. Excuse me. That'll move the ball forward five yards. 
Norristown helping out Upper Dublin to start the third quarter. And that's a sign of the aggressiveness that you mentioned that Norristown might have coming into this third quarter. A little too over aggressive, got across the line of scrimmage. So first and five for Upper Dublin. Norristown players trying to fire up their defense. Monty Jesse on the carry and he is driven back. He may have gotten two. And the Norristown players trying to fire each other up. Have to get something going. They appear to have, it, late in that second quarter, the whole team appeared to have gotten a little flat, thinking to themselves, it's seven nothing, you know, we're on our way. Well, the defense definitely looked flat, at least for that one play, the Jesse run. It was a great run, but it looked like they just didn't finish the tackles. And I think that's motivating them coming into this third quarter. Second and three. Hand off to Jesse once again. He is close to a first down. That's right in front of me and I still can't tell. Depends on where they spot it. He'll be just short. Third and inches for Albert Dublin. Momentum swing would definitely happen here. Norristown's gaining momentum if they can stop Upper Dublin and get somebody through that line and into the backfield. Logano goes in motion. Brandenburg on the keeper. That's a pretty impressive guy coming through there. 205 pounds, gets four yards and another first down for Upper Dublin. And it was very obvious what Upper Dublin was going to do that time. Brandenburg took the snap with his feet staggered one in front of the other rather than the traditional feet square method. Uh, he's just preparing himself to push off and get across the line and he had a huge hole. So more than just diving for the first down he picked up for. Well, when you have a quarterback like Audley Stewart who on a keeper might try and jump over the pile, you know, a little bit more active and will try and do some things. Justin Brandenburg is just gonna put the shoulder down and try and get in there. Hand off to the man inside and nothing doing right there. Ball carrier right there was number 81, Bobby Logano. James Stewart in the middle of that Norristown defense stopping him right there. No gain on the play, second and 10. Logano, the receiver to the far side. Brandenburg under center. He'll drop back to pass. Just under threw his receiver right there. Brandenburg still going back, trying to elude some Norristown pressure. Really couldn't plant and hit his receiver. He had him open. You're exactly right, Greg. He did have him. And Brandenburg, seeing the pressure coming up the middle, did not plant, step and throw. And he did have a receiver open downfield right about at the first down marker in front of the safety. One right there that I'm sure he wishes he had back. So third and 10 for Upper Dublin. They're on the 46 yard line. Send a man in motion to the far side. Brandenburg rolls to that right side once again. And now he's gonna have to run as nothing develops right there. And he is hit hard by two or three players. James Stewart finished it right there. You now on fourth down, Upper Dublin won't have to punt, so a good stand right there from the Norristown defense. They gave up one first down and said no more. Now they'll get the, their offense, the ball back. And that time, great downfield coverage from the corners, and James Edmonds made sure that Brandenburg had nowhere to go. Nice effort from Justin Brandenburg on that sideline to spin away from Mike Wilson and try to get to the first down marker, but Norristown certainly had enough players over there to force the punt. Greg Furman is the punter if we have, as we have a whistle on the field. Having some football problems, of course, with the wet conditions. It actually has lightened. The rain isn't too hard, if at all, right now. But of course, the field's still wet. So 
so we'll try again. Furman on fourth down. Stewart and Edmonds, the men deep. A booming kick from Furman. Drives Edmonds back to the five yard line and he is wrapped up at around the eight. Great downfield coverage right there. That was number 33, John Slezak. He was the first man down there and he was coming with a head of steam. James Edmonds tried to elude him, couldn't do it. Now Norristown pinned deep in their own territory. Impressive punt there from Greg Furman. And a huge play to start the third quarter and end that series for Upper Dublin. They certainly have the upper hand right now. Dublin appears to have come out with a little bit more intensity. Let's see how the offense comes out. And far sideline has gotten a lot louder, even though there's only about 40 or 50 people in the stands over there. Stewart under center. He'll go to Swintenberg. He gets to the outside. He's dangerous out here. And a good run from Troy Swintenberg. Let's give him about 27 on that carry. Great run. James Edmonds doing a nice job. Always tough for a receiver when you see the running back coming. You never want to get that holding call. James Edmonds did a nice job of just keeping his man to the inside and allowing Swittenberg to cut up field. And Swittenberg was just waiting to see which way Edmonds, Edmonds would go, whether he would turn his man outside. Edmonds had a better angle to force him inside and just locked on. And James Edmonds, we know how big he is, used that size that time to throw a great block. Got Swittenberg about 8 to 10 more. So after the 31-yard line, Troy Swittenberg breaking Norristown out of dangerous territory. Now he tries to get to the outside once again. May have gotten one. In there were the two linebackers, Chris Engert and John Brandenburg. Greg, I think we're seeing such a tight game here because both teams kind of similar styles. Really one star receiver, one great running back, and they're matched up fairly equally in size along the lines, the linebackers. Stewart, three-step drop, looking for Edmonds. Never waited for him to turn, and that pass is incomplete. A little miscommunication there between the quarterback and the receiver. And that's a timing play. James Edmonds just runs the out, and before he even turns, Swittenberg will deliver the ball, and Edmonds will turn, and there the ball will be. But in that case, it looked like a little bit early, or else Edmonds' cut was a little too late. And the ball just sort of floated out of bounds. So that's a play Narstown will have to work on to get some better timing. Third and eight for Norristown. They got one first down. You know they'd like to keep this going right here. Draw play to Swittenberg. Can he break a tackle? Yes. And he is fighting. Depending on where the spot is, I think he may have gotten the first down. Yes, he did. An aggressive draw play on third down. I like the call. I guess Norris on another first down. And again, it was Troy Swittenberg breaking the tackle. First man had him about three yards off the line of scrimmage. But Swittenberg ran easily through that and fought his way to the sticks. It's really valuable that you can run that draw when you have a guy you know is going to make the first tackler miss. Swittenberg's alone back. He'll go up the middle and he is wrapped up. We'll just call him Mr. Mudfield Jersey. Jersey appeared to be getting dirty, but it looked like it was number 56, Craig Holmes, one of the linemen. Some of the linebackers getting through there, John Brandenburg and Brian Brady. And we have an injury on the field. Northtown appears to have talked a little bit at halftime, said, you know, we're gonna win this game with Troy Swittenberg tonight. We're just going to have to try and get him some holes as they've gone to him a lot early in this third quarter. And they've gone to him a little bit more to the outside. It's like Norristown's trying to run Swittenberg where he can find himself a little bit of room since Upper Dublin has really blocked up the middle of the field so far tonight. So Norristown trying to get Troy Swittenberg the ball in some other places, make Upper, Upper Dublin chase him down.
Athletic trainer Dennis Flynn attending to the player down on the field. Try and get you a number as soon as we can. Coach Grove and a couple of the athletic trainers out there also tending to the player. While we have a chance tonight, we want to thank the Norristown Area School District for bringing you tonight's game. Our Director of Communications, Mr. Tony Koya. The man behind everything tonight, Mr. Garrett Hickman. And we want to thank a couple of other of Norristown alumni who came up tonight, Carl Moore and Carl Baker. Both of them, both attending Kutztown University along with Mr. Hickman. So the three of them see each other a lot. Happen to see each other in the booth tonight. Injured player on the field is number 56, Chris Durant. Appear to be working on his leg out there. Hopefully nothing too serious for Durant. Norris already lost Alignment in Jim DePiro. He was one of the starters earlier this year. He's been gone for about three or four weeks with a knee problem. And without the services of Jim Davis tonight, starting to thin out a little bit on that offensive line. It's always tough for an offensive line. It's starting to gel together. You always want five guys, and you always want five guys who can trust each other, and they start to, you know, develop a little bit of a unity on the field. And even more important as Durant looks like he's going to try to struggle to his feet is that Chris Durant is the center. And that exchange is so important between your center and your quarterback. And wow, it does not look very good for Chris Durant. Young man gets a nice round of applause as he comes off the field. Let's hope everything is okay with him. Just a huge part of that Norristown offensive line. It really opens up a lot of holes right down the middle of the field. And again, that exchange between your center and your quarterback, so important, especially on a night like this with a wet ball. So now we have second and 11 for Norristown as we resume play. New man into the game for Norristown is number 62, 60, or 52, excuse me, Matt DePiro. Gordon is the man in motion. The pitch outside to Swittenberg. He's got a hole and he'll break to the outside. He's gonna turn it upfield. Good tackle on that far sideline, but about an 18 or 19 yard gain for Swittenberg. He had a gaping hole to the outside. Good pursuit from Upper Dublin to make sure he didn't get to the end zone. But another good run for Norristown. They're starting to open some holes. And it was a nice, easy 18 yards for Swittenberg until the end when he had to put his head down and finish the play. But it had to be happy to see that expanse over to the left side. We talked about it earlier in the game. Norristown hoping to wear down upper double a little bit. It takes a lot to, you know, to stop Troy Swittenberg for four quarters and to stop this Norristown offense. They go right back to Swittenberg, break to the right side, breaks one tackle, gets himself about five yards. Narsam moving the ball quickly now. Under seven minutes left in this third quarter. Great trap that time from Brian Gordon. He turned his man to the outside. Swittenberg just ran right in behind him. And again, untouched across the line of scrimmage. That's going to get Troy Swittenberg a lot of yards. Down to the 34 now for a drive that started from their own eight yard line. Narstown putting an impressive one together here. Preet to the far sideline, Edmonds on the near sideline. Gordon again in motion. Hand off to Swittenberg up the middle. He's got a hole. Up ended at about the 19 yard line, but another first down. It, a train that's becoming harder and harder to stop. And all of a sudden the holes are just huge. That offensive line with the help of fullback Brian Gordon, has really started to turn some Upper Dublin players the other way. And now Upper Dublin, even with those eight guys, is not getting to Troy Swittenberg fast enough. And as he dances across the line of scrimmage, he's exploding into that defensive backfield. 
So in the red zone now at the 19 yard line. First down, they'll go with the backs in the eye. Back to Swittenberg. He kept pushing up the middle. We'll get it five or six on the run. And the surge from Norristown keeps going forward. There wasn't an end zone in the way. I think they'd be halfway to Conshohocken. They, they just are. keep pushing and pushing forward. This is what the coaches like to see. And they're moving the ball in bits and pieces tonight. And this is what you have to do if you have sights down the road to the playoffs. This is the kind of offense you're going to have to run. Narstown racking up first downs tonight. This has been a drive by a team that starting to show their dominance a little bit. You would think, and Swittenberg got a first down. This is a team that's showing that they're obviously you know, more talented up front, obviously more talented at the skills positions. They're really trying to establish themselves right now and say, okay, enough playing around. This is, you know, this is the time we have to get things moving. And Matt DePiro has been put in a tough spot and has really responded well. They've now gone right behind him up the middle with Swittenberg twice and gained some pretty good yards. So first and goal from the eight yard line. Edmonds isolated over on that far sideline. Maybe look for him to get the ball, but why go to him when you have Troy Swittenberg? But Stewart on the keeper, puts his head down and thrust to about the one yard line. A flag thrown on the play. Here's it's gonna be a holding as the Eagles are marching back. Undisciplined penalty right there. Not one you wanna commit when you're first in goal. Does this, strain, does this change the goal line uh, offense right now for Coach Grove? No, I, the holding call, got to move him back 10, but still with a first down. So I think Narstown still in position where they can run the ball for some significant yardage, but I would expect, should they be stopped first down, you might see them go up in the air, probably to Edmonds. Give up for Dublin credit. They are scraping and clawing, doing everything they can to try and stop this Norristown offense. They keep pushing forward, and now from the 18-yard line, first and 20. With a flag thrown. Appears that the upper Dublin lineman jumped off sides. Never want to give it right back to him after you just got them pushed back 10 yards. Yeah. And I misspoke there. It's only the five yard penalty for the holding. And now it is going to be the five to move Narstown right back to the seven. So if that game plan had changed, they can change it right back. Courtesy of the left defensive end for the Cardinals. So we'll forget the last three minutes ever happened and first and goal from the eight. Swittenberg and Gordon are split in the backfield. Stewart back to pass. He looks for Preet. Catch is made, he fights, and he got to the end zone. Good second effort from wide receiver Ricky Preet. We have an eight yard touchdown pass, and Norristown has now jumped to a 13 to six lead. Good strike right there from Audley Stewart. He made sure he got that ball out of there. Always a tough throw on that sideline. If the quarterback picks that, that's a 99-yard you know, return for a touchdown. Well, the long out requires arm strength, and Narstown coaches have the confidence in Arlie Stewart and that arm strength. Uh, but again, the importance of having multiple weapons. Ricky Preet playing for Ernest Terrell tonight. So normally their speedster on the outside. Preet ran a nice route, flared to the outside, and Arlie Stewart threw it to him beautifully. Hit him right in the hands as Matt Spitko's extra point is good. But then, as Preet turned, had an upper Dublin defender right in his face and really had to brace himself, dance right around that defender, and then split two more for the touchdown. And good composure from the wide receiver right there. It's always tough to catch that ball, and he could have very easily, you know, gone down to three, and we'd still be, we'd be second in goal right now. Good composure to fight and make sure he got into the end zone. But Norristown was able to isolate Ricky Preet out wide because 
he's probably you would probably consider him your fourth weapon down on the goal line behind Swittenberg, James Edmonds, and Audley Stewart. So with Preet isolated, he was able to make that move since Upper Dublin could only spend one man out there to guard him. Well, as we've been talking about that last play, the gods of rain have absolutely let loose. And Coach Grove should really look into the stands and see the people that are now sprinting and scampering all over the place to try and avoid the rain. When you chase the cheerleaders off the field, you know it's raining hard. There's a lot of spirit down there, but they came off the field under the umbrellas. And, I, and it I'm, has opened up. I'm warning you now, folks, if we lose a number, that's because our rosters blew away. I got to ask you, are we in Kansas anymore? So let's imagine that the ball did not stay on the tee for Matt Spitko. They have to hold it for him. Imagining this ball is going to do some interesting things in the air. Wind is going with Matt Spitko right now. Mike Wilson will hold for him right there. We're underway once again. That kick will hit at the 10 and will roll into the end zone for a touchback. Good kick from Spitko and Upper Dublin will start from the 20 yard line. They're down eight. With 347 left in the third quarter. It's not urgent that they score a touchdown, but you know they'd like to move the ball a little bit on this drive. And Narsound did catch a break there as the win with Matt Spitko. He kicked it right with the win, just punched it into the corner, let it roll into the end zone. So Upper Dublin, I'm sure, hoping that they could go less than 80 yards to try and even this game up. They are faced with a tough task, especially with the weather as it is right now. The pitch to Jesse on the outside. They're going to drive him out of bounds right at the 20. They did not let him cut up field. Good pursuit there from the Norristown lineman. This is an athlete's dream playing in the rain. I, there are some people who think, well, maybe not the running back dream, but. You have weird dreams, Greg. <laughs> well, OK. There are some guys in the trenches right now who are saying, bring on the mud. Let's put it that way. Well, see, it's good for me because I'm really slow on a soccer field. So anything to slow somebody down, I appreciate. Brandenburg, quick three-step drop. Quick pass to the outside, and he might have gotten two yards. A fumble, and Norristown got the ball. Uh, that was a very strange play. It looked like the ball might have hit the ground. No, Jesse picked up the ball. I guess it was a lateral. He was, he was, Brandenburg was skipping stones, basically. It looked like the ball slipped out of his hand with Jesse only about three yards away from him. All he could do was one hop it to him. So Jesse never with the handle. Alertly picked it up off the first hop, but then as he ducked into a crowd, Norristown managed to strip it loose. And this is what we've seen. First turnover of the game goes Norristown's way. And just as they did in Penridge, albeit about three quarters of a quarter later, Norristown has a chance to go up by two scores. It, it, it's amazing how they always seem to get that one turnover at their, you know, the opposing 22-yard line. They always seem to have a chance to, you know, three plays and punch it into the end zone. We have a flag on the play, or before the play, excuse me. Okay, full start on Norristown, driving back five yards. And we'll blame that one on the wind. We'll say somebody got blown over. Well, I guess we have to make sure that our fourth quarter, uh, oh yeah, we do a nice job of calling the game because half of the people who are here are now running for their cars, unfortunately. How did it end? Only one place to find out. Uh -huh. Right here on the Norristown Area School District it Television Channel. It all comes back to us. First and 15. Stewart on the keeper. He'll get to the outside. He's got some room. Tries to cut back inside. A flag on the play. Stewart cut back up the field. Dipping and deking, trying to avoid players, upper Dublin players. Oh. 
a face mask on an upper double, and I did not see that. It looked like it was Kirk Burry out in front of Audley Stewart. And it's a hand must have gotten up in Burry's face. That's the so thing. That's, that's why I didn't see that play because it, it it wasn't Stewart. And I was watching Stewart try and you know break to the inside. Kirk Berry downfield blocking won that battle absolutely. And after a, a beautiful acrobatic run from Audley Stewart, keeping his balance on the wet field, continuing to run, got Narstown the extra yardage off the penalty. And they'll tack it on. So now it'll be first and goal. from about the five yard line. Stewart on a busted play and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Very lucky right there. Not real smooth on first and goal. Looked like a straight keeper and Jason List jumped through the hole. And right as he shot that gap, right where Audley Stewart was planning on going. So no room for Audley Stewart that time and down by the goal line. List had excellent penetration to break up the play. So second and five for Norristown. And the momentum has really swung in the last three minutes. The ball's on the ground. Someone's got it. It is. I don't know if the ball got out of bounds. They're going to give the ball. Norristown got the ball back. Apparently the ball went out of bounds. Ricky Preet was trying to dive on that. He kind of fell to the outside. That's a break, because Troy Swittenberg never got the handle on the toss. And then as he tried to pick it up, he kicked it towards the sideline. And it was Ricky Preet over there who wasn't quite able to jump on it. As you said, slid right by it. And number, number five, Tim Saber, was trying to hop on that ball, and he was very angry that he didn't get the call right there. That would have been a huge turnover. And really that would have, it would have prolonged what we think might be the closing shot. Well, two scores, I'm not gonna put up or doubling out of it quite yet, but it certainly would have put him in a hole. And again, the weather is making it extra tough. So third and seven for Norristown. Like you said, walk up, wall a big break for the Eagles. And now Stewart bobbles a snap and we may have had another false start. That's and what no it doubt, is. The conditions are making things get a little bit sloppy right now. Really tough to function. Narstown has to bear down right now and keep their focus. They're right near the goal line. And uh, with these mistakes happening, they certainly would be well in command. If they can put another six or seven on the board right now. So now third and 12, the offensive coach has got to try something creative to get them a first down. So no, they can't even get a first down. They've got to go into the end zone. I forgot where they were. Two receivers once again, Preet and Edmonds. Stewart drops back to pass, the fade pass to the corner to Edmonds. He got that ball, it's a touchdown. James Edmonds. Just manhandling the corner out on that far sideline. A 12-yard touchdown pass. And there it is. The one that was caused by the turnover that the, def the defense created. And now 20 to 6. Good effort there from James or from Audley Stewart to get that ball to James Edmonds. A great catch right there by the tall receiver. And as Edmonds ran to the corner, the defender out there turned to face the ball and jumped back into Edmonds. Edmonds was strong enough to keep his balance and then just as that defender lost his balance from jumping into Edmonds just let the ball drop right into the bread basket. So again well delivered by Audley Stewart and Edmonds not over the top this time but came back to get it. Spicko on the extra point. Kicks up and it is good. 21 to 6 with 206 left in the third quarter. Larson coming out and putting up two touchdowns on the board. It got very quiet on that upper Dublin sideline very quickly. Now, a sense of urgency, I would guess, over on the Cardinal sideline. They realize right now that it, it, it's got to happen soon, if not sooner. <laughs> yeah, it really can't be soon enough for them. They have 14 minutes to go. 
And again, Matt Spicko is still going to have the win with him. So you would expect this kip, kick to be deep once again. And Upper Dublin is not going to want to face a long field into the wind. Luckily for them, if the conditions hold up as they are, they'll be turned around going the other way after only two more minutes. But right now, they're going to have to be careful just to hang on to this ball and start to move the ball slowly. You can't think of two scores right now. Still with 14 minutes left, you have to think of the first one. Do what you have to do. Run your offense to get that first score. And then you start considering what do we have to do to get the ball back and how much time do we need to get that even touchdown. Well, and this is a team we know that can do it. We saw them with that that five-minute scoring drive they had late in the second quarter. It's a team we know can move the ball, and then that one big play from the running back, all of a sudden they're right back in this ball game. Spicko will kick off once again, goes to that corner. Taken, and a good stick right there from number 53, Donovan Palmer, did not let the player get up the field. They have a flag on the play. Maybe a little skirmish between the players after. 